Now folks, with just over two days to go before James Gunn's the Suicide Squad opens UK wide. I cannot wait, I'm going to my local Cineworld. You probably heard this already in my previous reactions to that movie with my best buddy, but I thought I would go back to 2016 when David Ayer's Suicide Squad, without the the, was released. And you know what? I thought it'd be a great time to go back, talk about my second or third impressions of this film. So without further ado, let's check this review out, you handsome hunker hunker. Yeah, so going into this film again, I was a bit trepidatious because I remember the third act has kind of burned itself into my memory, maybe for bad reasons, which I'll get to in a while. I'm not sure if I still feel that way, but honestly, the casting of this movie couldn't be more perfect. Will Smith as Deadshot, and he's a bit of a revelation in this film. Harley Quinn, played by the always effervescent Margot Robbie, superb. And then you had Joel Kinnaman as Rick Flag. As you know, uh, Tom Hardy was the original choice, but he pulled out for some reason. I kind of, I think he went to people let to be Venom. I, I'm not sure if that was the reason, but uh, Kinnaman is perfect. And obviously, if you've seen the my trailer reactions for James Gunn's reboot, he, he's kind of nailed that part perfectly. I can't imagine anybody else but Mr. Kinnaman in the role of Rick Flag. And I've been a fan of Kinnaman since the killing on AMC, so he's a top actor. Jai Courtney is Captain Boomerang. Good day, mate. He's awesome. And the other assaulted actors who play Killer Croc and Diablo and Kitana. Obviously, Karen Fukuhara from The Boys. She's great. So you know the story already. This motley crew of wonderful inmates are released from prison from Amanda Waller, played by Viola Davis. She is a badass in this. She's perfect casting. She takes the role seriously, but at the same time, she does have a bit of fun as well, dropping a couple of meta references here here, there and everywhere. This film does tie back to the already established DC movies that were helmed by Zack Snyder. So I kind of like that. And it's just kind of really great. Like, you know, these guys are, you know, they've never met, met each other before until now when they're released. And I think the friendship that they start to form over the course of the movie is actually one of the most cool things about this movie that I like. The costume design is off the chart. It really is like, Deadshot's outfit is fantastic. Uh, I'll say Harley Quinn, even though I have my criticisms about her outfit, you know, it's still badass. It kind of inspired a lot of cosplayers to do what they did. Killer Croc, man, wow. I've got to say, for practical effects, they look really good. And the actor who, I can't remember his name, but he played Mr. Echo in the second season of Lost because he died at the end of that season. Oops, spoiler alert. He's absolutely fantastic. Cara Delevingne as Enchantress. Yeah, she, I, I tell you what, when she was all uglified, I think she looks really good. Uh, but when she's back to her normal self, I didn't really find her that compelling a character. And I will say that David Ayer, uh, he did a great job in directing this movie. I mean, the amount of time he had to do this and it's, yeah, I've got to commend the guy on that because he's one of my favorite film directors. If you've seen things like Fury, End of Watch, uh, Sabotage with Arnold Schwarzenegger, the guy has got a good flair for action. And I think he really loves directing this movie. I mean, you can kind of see it as well, like the nighttime shots where the helicopters are flying into the city, really, really well done. They've got a, a touch of uh, apocalypse now about them. You can definitely see that in the way that he's approached that. The action is good for the most part. It's none of this cutaway crap. You know, you can see the action, what's going on. The actors trained extensively to get those uh, moves down to a T and it all works. You know, no shaky cam, it's, it's, it's fantastic. I love all of that. Which brings me to this fantastic article by Screen Rant. So it's the eight things you should know about the air cut. So number eight, David Ayer has supported the release of his cut. The hashtag release the air cut has been regularly appearing on social media since Warner Brothers first announced in May 2020 that the similarly fabled Snyder cut would be released on HBO Max. Well, we know what happened with that. And I'm gonna also add the release the air cut hashtag on this video too. 
Um, now, some of this stuff I didn't know actually, and I wanted to go through it here because I might forget to mention some things in this video. So, Warner Brothers altered Air's vision due to, to the success of Deadpool, um, which is crazy actually. I mean, that's a 20th Century Fox property back then. I know it's Marvel, but wow. So when BVS underperformed at the box office with fans and critics complaining about its dark tone, Deadpool was a groundbreaking hit with its lightened vibe and overriding scent of humor. So the studio recut Suicide Squad, here we go, to be less like the former and not like the latter, uh, or, and more like the latter, beg your pardon. And then of course, the trailer footage was brought in, it was recut, they had that licensed music as well, like uh, Ballroom Blitz by the Suite, you know, it just, it's it actually, the tone of that trailer with the music was pretty good, actually, I've got to say. Uh, but it was kind of weird that when you watch the movie in the end, it was like when I was watching on Sunday, I'm thinking, where are the uh, licensed soundtracks that I heard in the uh, trailer? So, yeah, that's a, it's a strange thing, actually. And uh, after the perception, yeah, after the reception of the trailer, yeah, 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 I've done that already. I think I have. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, Air Cut had more Batman. Okay, this is like Warner Brothers' big champion more than Superman. So, one of the few things that worked about the release of the Suicide Squad was Affleck's cameo appearance as Batman. But he only shows up for a brief flashback. I think it was just two flashbacks, yeah. But according to the Ben Affleck stunt double, Richard uh, Citroni, Air's version of the movie featured more Batman, which is never a bad thing. It's a wonder why Warner would cut out Batman scenes in a bid to appeal to more DC fans. It's true. Um, Jared Leto's Joker. Uh, yeah, you know what? I've got to say quickly, I like Jared Leto's Joker. I thought it was pretty good. Yes, he was playing it like Jim Carrey a little bit, but he had a fantastic delivery of the lines he was given. And he was really a bit too passionate about the part if you know what he did in between takes and what he did to his uh, fellow cast members uh, but here's a really interesting thing let me see da, da, da. Well, at least it was something different new and different hang on at least it was something new and different as opposed to just copying what worked before Heath Ledger's definitive Oscar winning clown prince of crime Joker was featured much more heavily in Air's original cut including uh, being present in the final battle which would have been interesting to have seen and I've mentioned the soundtrack uh, already um, let's see oh yes yeah, so the damaged tattoo had a backstory um, which is pretty cool, you know, the tattoo written across, damaged, I think, written across his forehead. Uh, when the recut version of Suicide Squad hit theaters, Aya detailed the backstory behind both the damaged tattoo and the grill that appeared in his original cut. Uh, Batman knocked the Joker's teeth out following the murder of Robin, which was teased in BVS, then later on in the Snyder cut um, of um, Justice League. And so that's where the grill is kind of like replacing, you know, his missing teeth, which is kind of cool. And uh, yes, so scared, right, this is the one that makes me laugh. Ayers cut scared the crap out of the executives. Yeah, when, um, when, shoot, wait, right, when shoot Warner Brothers announced that the studio wasn't actively developing a release of the air cut, Ayer reached out to Entertainment Weekly to comment on the news and keep fans invested. Um, yes, so... <sighs> Right, so all this just this a vague comment that the movie was amazing, but it just scared the bejesus out of the executives, which is a story I hear about Warner Brothers all the time. It really does frustrate me. But you know what? If you decided not to watch this version of the Suicide Squad before you go and watch the James Gunn cut or his reboot, you should definitely watch this one because it's a lot better than I thought it was. The third act, I know you had Enchantress doing a little, you know, Betty dance routine, but that doesn't last very long. And when she becomes ugly, uh, I kind of like that version, as I said before. And it's a good third act because all the um, anti-heroes take turns to try and defeat Enchantress. It's actually really, really well staged. I liked it. And it's very bombastic. And the whole film has that tone to it. So in the end, I would actually give David Ayer's Suicide Squad from 2016 four out of five T.
tasty hot dogs. So there you have it guys, that's been my review. I hope you've enjoyed it today. And yes, I've been shooting videos non-stop back to back because that's the kind of guy I am. I like to be a bit of a mercenary, a rebel without a cause. And if you enjoyed my content today and you want to continue to enjoy it, you can hit that like button below. You can smash that subscribe button and I will see you on my next review reaction very, very soon. Calm the daddy. Pen. Oh, <laughs> Listen, you are my guests to this handsome hunker hunker.